And now a reading from 1 Peter, the third chapter, the 13 through the 22nd verses. We get more words from the apostle uh, instructing us on living into our Christian identity. Who will harm you if you are zealous for good? But happy are you even if you suffer because of righteousness. Don't be terrified or upset by them. Instead, regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Yet do this with respectful humility, maintaining a good conscience. Act in this way so that those who malign your good lifestyle in Christ may be ashamed when they slander you. It is better to suffer for doing good, if this could possibly be God's will, than for doing evil. Christ himself suffered on account of sins once for all, the righteous one on behalf of the unrighteous. He did this in order to bring you into the presence of God. Christ was put to death as a human, but made alive by the Spirit. And it was by the Spirit that he went to preach to the spirits in prison. In the past, these spirits were disobedient. When God patiently waited during the time of Noah, Noah built an ark in which a few, that is eight, lives were rescued through water. Baptism is like that. It saves you now, not because it removes dirt from your body, but because it is the mark of a good conscience toward God. Your salvation comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is at God's right side. Now that he has gone into heaven, he rules over all angels, authorities, and powers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
more than anything in the whole world, the things that bring families together, that keep them together, that unite them as one, that can keep them together when they face suffering is the shared history of ritual. Now, ritual often have, we think of that as like, I don't know, about a big hat and like a barmy thingy and like gold and stuff. But rituals don't have to be that. In fact, the most important ritual that you as a family can take together, anybody know? Eating dinner together. They've proven that kids who eat dinner with their family uh, six out of seven nights of the week score better, get into college, and have better life outcomes. The simple thing, having dinner together. The other thing that's really important as a family is to have a shared value system. So it's not enough to get together, but you have to agree on what is important in life. How are we going to approach life together. So, for example, one of our Troyer values in our family, one of those things that we hammer home to our children is do your best. It's okay to fail. You're not going to fail. You're not going to win every time. You're not going to succeed every time. In fact, you may try really hard and completely mess up. That's okay as long as you try. I think I say that 14 times a day. That's a Troyer value. And every family has a value. I bet if you sit and think about it, you could name what your family values are. One or two or three, maybe, even of them. And some of them are not good. Right? <laughs> like one of my family values growing up was comfort. My family loved comfort. So what did we do? We ate dinner together on the couch, watching Jeff. In fact, the competitions would be so fierce at Jeopardy that whoever won Jeopardy that night, my mom had to keep score, whoever won Jeopardy didn't have to do the dishes. Right? Comfort, knowledge, those were our family values. And we hammered them home every night by watching dinner together on the couch, playing Jeopardy. Feel like a little fortune. But if you think about it, you could name some of your family values. Ones that maybe aren't good, are good, the unspoken ones, the ones that you speak aloud. The good families, the ones that are strong, the ones that last through suffering, have a shared value. They hold the same things as true. Turns out the church is no different. The church isn't any different. It's a family. Really, it's a family. And if the church is going to withstand a storm, we have to agree on what the values are. What is it that brings us together as a group of people? What is it that makes it important for us to be here and present in this place each day? Community. Shared suffering. Sharing the load. When we do X or Y, what are we saying to the world is important? What are we saying to ourselves is important? Shared values are what holds a group together when there is suffering, when there is challenging times, as there always will be. The other thing that's fun and that is important is shared activities, which is why we go and do things like dance and play bluegrass music and go to trivia night and throw cornhole, which don't necessarily seem like church activities, but are really important because those are what bring us together. Things like cover dish dinners. Things like standing in the lawn and waiting for VBS to begin. It's things like that shared conversation, just having fun together. the fun things, but it's also the things that we do that are ritual each week. First Peter lifts up baptism, because that's what gives us our identity in God. That baptism is what brings us together. It all is part of what makes us part of God's family. But equally important is this table. It's important that we all come to 
the table. Now, back in the day, 100 years ago, you would have to come to session before communion began. Does anybody know this history? It fascinates me. There are still some churches that do this. You, as a church member, would have to meet the session. The session would say, now, Betty, what did you do this week? Are you right with God, Betty? And they would do this with every person. Every person in the church. They all just would go around to every person's house and say, Randy, are you good with God this week? Are you good with your neighbor this week? Is there anything that you need to confess? And that's why every week we begin with a prayer of confession. Because it's an acknowledgement that each one of us is not right with God. Each one of us has done something this week that we sort of need to maybe say, like, me. And then we can come to the table as a unified body. It's having a meal and setting aside our differences. It's meeting God and acknowledging that we have a shared value of love, grace, and forgiveness. We show up for each other. We show up at the table. We show up for each other with love. We show up for each other with food and hospitality over and over and over again. We show up for each other by sending birthday cards and calling each other on the phone just to say hi. We show up for each other by bringing Chick-fil-A by when we know someone can't cook. If there's too much going on. It's a shared value of love, of community, and of hospitality. We do things together. We come to the table because that's what gets us through the suffering. We come to the table to receive God's grace because we are united as one. And so maybe we can be right with God and set aside whatever it is that seems to be less important than that one value. That we're family. That we love each other. That we make that choice each week to be a 